my name is Heather Jennings and I'm the King Chow Health Fellow here at the Tennessee Justice Center. I want to talk to you all today about Tennessee's new Katie Beckett program and really talk about why it's so essential to so many families here in Tennessee and why we're so happy that Tennessee has finally implemented our Katie Beckett program. So the necessity of a Katie Beckett program. So back in 2019, Tennessee had about 340,000 children with special health care needs, and only about 40% of these children were on Medicaid. The other 60% of these children either just had private insurance or were uninsured. And we know that private insurance places a lot of caps on coverage for med different medical services, and it doesn't cover everything medically necessary. So a lot of times children with special health care needs who only have private insurance, they help them miss out on some services if their parents aren't able to afford it. A Katie Beckett program allows these children to become Medicaid eligible by not including their parental income and access assets in the eligibility determination. And this is so important because Medicaid comes with EPSCT protections, which we'll talk about in just a second, and it allows the children to get whatever is medically necessary, get any services medically necessary. And for those who are unfamiliar, Katie Beckett was a real person. When she was five months, she contracted a brain infection, which led to her having seizures and becoming paralyzed. And after she spent three years in the hospital. During that time, she did get Medicaid covered. After she spent three years in the hospital, though, she was finally well enough to go home. However, if she went home, she would lose that Medicaid coverage and her parents had already reached the cap on their private insurance. So if she went home, she would basically have no health insurance and they wouldn't be able to care for her. So in order for her to get the care she needed, she had to stay institutionalized. And this means she had to miss out on familial supports and the natural supports in the home, which when a child misses out on those things, it can really impact their well-being and their development. So her story came to President Ronald Reagan at the time, and this led to the Reagan administration implementing something called the Katie Beckett Waiver. And this allows children with special health care needs to kind of be exempt from the financial requirements of other Medicaid categories. And by exempt, it means that their parental income doesn't help the count in determining their Medicaid eligibility. And this was a game changer. However, every state had to decide for themselves if they wanted to implement the Katie Beckett waiver. And Iowa, which was Katie Beckett's home state, was the first state to do it. And as of 2020, Tennessee has became the last state to implement a Katie Beckett program, and it really means so much to Tennessee families, and it allows them to keep their children at home despite their children qualifying for institutional level of care. If families now want their children to receive care in the home, Katie Beckett allows them to get the extra supports they need to care for their child in the home. And that is just so amazing, and we're so proud of Tennessee and so happy it is now implemented. Let's talk about the benefits of Katie Beckett. First, let's we'll start with Part A. Part A is for children who have the most severe health care needs. These are children who qualify for care in an institution, but their families want to care for them at home. So Katie Beckett Part A offers these children full Medicaid benefits, as well as some wraparound or home and community-based services. And we'll talk a little bit more about, about those in a second. But for Katie Beckett Part A, there are 300 slots available and families are required to have private insurance, which will pay first before Medicaid pays anything. And sometimes families are required to pay a premium for Katie Beckett Part A. So now let's go to the benefits. So again, these kids get full Medicaid benefits. And what that means is they get full EPSDT protections. And EPSDT stands for Early Periodic Screening, Diagnosis, and Treatment. This is a set of federal guidelines which basically says that Medicaid programs in the country must cover wherever is medically necessary for children under 21. And since all kids on Katie Beckett are under 18, all children 
qualify for Katie Beckett Part A will get these full EPSDT protections. And that means they'll get whatever medical services are medically necessary, as well as whatever home health care, private duty nursing, as well as any therapy such as physical, speech, occupational, applied behavioral analysis. All of that must be covered per EPSDT protections. And in addition to that, those full Medicaid benefits, children on Part A get 15000 in wraparound or these home and community-based services, also known as HCBS. And with this, what children get is they can get things like respite care, community transportation, they get minor home and then some vehicle modification, as well as a whole storm of other benefits, even assistive technology. So Katie Beckett really tries to provide the family with the extra supports they need to take care of their child at home and make sure the child can stay in that home environment because a lot of times it will be cheaper for the child to stay at home and it will be better for the child's well-being and development for the child to stay at home. Part B, also known as the Medicaid Diversion Group, is for children who are at risk for institutional level of care but don't currently qualify for institutional level of care. These kids still have high health, special health care needs. However, since they don't qualify for institutional level of care, they are placed in Part B. And in Part B, as the name implies, they don't get Medicaid benefits, so they do not get those full EPSDT protections. What they do get is $10,000 in wraparound services or home and community-based services, and they can use these funds to pay for insurance premiums, or to pay for things that insurance usually doesn't cover. And they also have the option to get a health reimbursement account. And with this HRA, they are able to pay for things like specialists that their private insurance doesn't pay or get reimbursed for doctor visits, um, dental visits, vision visit, visits using a debit card. So there are a lot of things that the family can use the health reimbursement account or HRA for. But again, they do not get the full Medicaid benefit. Also, in Part B, there is no private insurance requirement or premium associated, and there are 2,700 slots available. So Part B, again, is for children who are at risk for institutionalization, but currently do not qualify for institutional level of care. Part B allows their families to get extra supports. So the children are still able to remain in the home. Okay, lastly, I want to talk about the benefits of Part C. So Part C, also known as continued eligibility, is for kids who are losing Medicaid eligibility. They are usually losing Medicaid eligibility due to an increase in parental income or access. And for these children, they qualify for Part A. However, so that means they qualify for care in an institution. However, there is no Part A slot available to them. So Part C allows them to keep Medicaid coverage, so have that continued Medicaid eligibility until a Part A slot opens up for them. And there are no premiums or private insurance requirement for Part C. There's also no limit on the number of slots available in Part C. However, for kids in Part C, if a Part A slot opens up for them, then they must move to Part A. Additionally, the benefits of Part C. The benefit of Part C is the child continues to get full Medicaid benefits so they can take advantage of those EPSDT protections I talked about. And that means they can still get whatever medical care is medically necessary, take advantage of any private aid nursing therapy needs they have. However, they do not get those wraparound services you see in Part A or in Part B. They only get the full Medicaid coverage. But full Medicaid, again, is still so powerful because you get those EPSDT protections. So those are the benefits of Part C. Thank you all, as always, for watching this video. And please feel free to check out some of our past webinars and flyers about the Katie Beckett program and our other video blogs about other issues in Tennessee. Thank you.